for those car companies. So who better to ask about this than the man who had a better plan for America? And that is, of course, Senator John McCain. Senator, you know, I, I, we told you so, but I know you don't want to go down that road. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, and thank you for calling me Senator and not Sir. <laughs> if I called you ma'am, I'd really be in trouble, but uh, we're, we're going to get into that later in the program. Uh, you know what? You're as big a troublemaker as I am, by the way, for the record. Uh, Senator, look, look at this. Look at how Americans, first of all, the president's approval rating, we had watched and witnessed that Americans' approval rating for his policies have been down and down significantly, but now we see his personal approval ratings coming in sync with, with his job approval. What, what do you make of that? Well, I think that uh, personal job approval always follows approval or disapproval of policies, and that's beginning to happen, but he still has strong popularity. But this health care reform issue, Americans are beginning to figure out that this would be a massive government takeover with a multi-trillion dollar additional cost that despite comments about fiscal discipline, we now, we passed a bill today that is supposed to take care of the war in Iraq and Afghanistan, and we have cash for clunkers where you'll get $4,500 if you hand in your, your old car for a new one. Even even a year old car. I mean, the, 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 the out of control spending it staggers the imagination. Hey, listen, all we got to do is you got to go to a local junkyard. All you got to do is tow it to your house <laughs> and you're going to get $4,500. i am going to go do that. I mean, I, I, look, it, it's a matter of what the role of the government is. According to this poll, though, only 33% favor Obamacare. And we now see that America, right track, wrong track, you know, 46% of Americans more believe that America is on the wrong track. When, when we get a chance, I want to talk to Iran, but the, the, a devastating blow to the uh, administration's plans it was a Congressional Budget Office study that came out two days ago that said under the plan that we are considering in the Senate that it would mean a trillion dollar cost and only cover a third of those that are presently uninsured. Do the math, my friend. That's at least a three trillion dollar cost and of course they have no plan for how to pay for it. Well, Although I think they might have a plan, they just don't want to tell the American people just yet. Well, I, I think that's a big part of it. You're talking about the CBO scoring that, that literally said it's over $62,000 per new person we insure. 23 million Americans would be forced out of their current health care coverage system, and another 37 million Americans would still be uninsured. So it seems to not even want to accomplish the main objective to begin with. Well, not only that, uh, we are now supposedly proceeding with a legislative process, and we have no uh, plan on the part of the administration or the Democrats on how to pay for it, what the, po the government option will be, and what there are several other key items if we are going to move forward with health care. Look, health care is, is the costs are out of control. We've got to get the costs under control. We've got to make it affordable and available, but a government takeover is not something that the American people are beginning to figure out would be good for them because they couldn't keep their own private health insurance under this plan no matter what the president says. Let me move on to Iran if I can, uh, Senator, for just a minute. Ralph Peters writing in the New York Post today says silence is complicity and the headline of the article is green light for a crackdown. Why, why would the, the United States of America and the president, I know he thinks we're an arrogant country, but why, when you see hundreds of thousands of people fighting for liberty and freedom, looking to America, not for any military intervention, but just some moral support, the way that Ronald Reagan offered moral support after martial law was declared in Poland, why would the president remain virtually silent on it? You and I are both students of history, and we've seen this movie before. Uh, when Ronald Reagan stood up for the workers in, in Gdansk in Poland, when he stood up for the people of Czechoslovakia and Prague Spring, and, and America did, and some good Democrats did too, uh, we, we were on the right side of history. We did not. We did not ignore the hopes and dreams and aspirations of these people. You notice the people are marchers. The signs are in English. Where is my vote? We, uh, you know, I, I get so uh, disturbed about this, but the fact is that we have a fundamental belief in the rights of every human being. And that is, uh, it was articulated on July 4th, 1776, that we believe that all 
have our God-given rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We are walking by on the other side of the street here. We should weigh in and say, we're not going to send arms. We're not for violence. We are for the rights of people to go to the streets and peacefully disagree with their government, Senator, especially when it's a corrupt election. Senator, during the campaign, Joe, you know, we, we talked about uh, early on, Joe Biden had said that this president would be tested. Do you think between North Korea, you know, detonating these bombs and firing these missiles, uh, and do you think by his tepid response and his, his inability to go out there in, in favor of this liberty movement, this freedom movement, and calling America arrogant, do you think that our enemies have concluded that Barack Obama is weak, like Jimmy Carter was weak? I think it's too early to say that, but when... Uh, the president says that it would be meddling if we raise our voices in support of fundamental human rights, and that is the ability to peacefully disagree with your government, then there's something very wrong. And these people deserve our outspoken support. And that does not mean I'm saying we should send arms or anything else. But America should express our support as we have for movements throughout yep. history where people deserve and need freedom and democracy. And maybe the two countries, Afghanistan and Iraq, who are now democracies, might be an inspiration to the Iranian people. I got to tell you, Senator, we appreciate you being here. I got to tell you, in my mind, he's sending a message to the world that America is unilaterally disarming. Very frightening if he can't even send, you know, a voice of support for this effort towards freedom, in my mind. Very dangerous. We're on the wrong side of history, my friend, and we've been on the right side of history for a long time. Senator McCain, thanks for being with us. Thank you. And coming